I'm a professor of classical archaeology and I specialize in Mediterranean archaeology. Um, I have I did my doctorate many years ago on um, the Roman Eastern provinces and that's also when my interest in Palmyra began. Portraits from Palmyra really make up the largest corpus of representations of deceased people in the ancient world. The whole point of when I started the Palmyra Portrait Project was to go to Palmyra and basically work with the museum there in the collections in Syria. So it is extremely frustrating to uh, not have been able to work on site with the primary material. But I also think that the fact that we couldn't do field work forced us to look at the archive in a different way. So if we hadn't had to do that, we wouldn't necessarily have understood how important the archive was. So yes, this is the well, one of the first boxes of the of the archive with the sheets in them. We would assume that originally Ingholt had had them ordered according to his PS numbers and then continued his catalogue from 1928 up through, well, at least up to sometimes in the 70s. And sometimes there are multiple sheets for each portrait, different views of different portraits. They can be in different locations or just different details. And so there are about, there are just over 1,600 sheets in the publication that's coming out. So it's a very worthful um, and rich archive. Very much of what was in the Palmyra Museum has been destroyed. So this archive is in many ways so much more valuable now, unfortunately, than it was before the Civil War, because it is the documentation, and for some of the objects, the only documentation that exists of these objects. Aleph Foundation played a big role in making this project possible because it takes a lot of resources for experts and for people who put time into both digitizing the archive but not least doing research on each single object sheet. It has all been pulled together by Amy Miranda as the pivotal postdoc in the project who's really kept everything together during a very hard time also, because don't forget we were just <laughs> in full lockdown for, for more than a year. So it's quite amazing that we've actually managed to get all done. In that project, we have made one virtual reconstruction of a grave that's not existing anymore with a researcher in California, Scott McAvoy. We've recontextualized archive sheets, diary sheets inside this virtual grave. So you can basically take a virtual walking tour of the grave, see where the portraits in antiquity were actually located. We really try to communicate to the research world and to the outside world, to politicians, stakeholders and foundations that it is actually extremely important to make these archives available in a research-based way to the outside world because it's also a matter of democratization of data. We are also giving something back to the local communities in the countries that have lost the cultural heritage. We 
as archaeologists also have a responsibility to treat this material in a very respectful way. Um, it does come from people who have been alive. And so on the one hand, we need to be very respectful. On the other hand, we need to be critical of how archaeology was done in that generation as well. But I think we've struck a good balance in, in the project and, and that is what drives me as a researcher. And um, I like the interface between the, the living world and the world of the past. <laughs>